with the lung cancer folks, really pretty consistent right from the beginning. They know, want to know everything, Shub. And from a GI cancer world, we've gone a little slower with this. What's your current practice on when you're doing testing like this? Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, uh, since I was in fellowship, uh, not as long as Mark. 30 said. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks so at 50 percent, <laughs> yeah, 50 percent phase one. Sorry, Mark. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so essentially, you know, at that time it was uh, it was still the carbidaxel days, but you know, this pie chart was coming out, and I know in all the GI meetings we go, we always look at the lung pie chart. We used to look at breast cancer when I was in fellowship, change to the lung pie chart, and look at it longingly to see if we can bring the same things to uh, patients with colorectal cancer and with pancreatic cancer. Uh, but I think it's, it's kind of growing, especially in the colorectal space where we have now with the BRAP mutations, we have uh, uh, drugs which have been approved earlier uh, with pancreatic cancer, where in metastatic we can give, let's say, Olaparib or BRCA1 to not for germline, but still, I think the testing has been developing, you know, with the recent uh, article from uh, Mike, uh, you know, from George, he was, he was formerly in Georgetown. Uh, you know, with Lancet Oncology, that if you treat patients with uh, metastatic pancreatic cancer also on a targeted agent, they can tend, if they have an oncogenic driver, if they really have a driver mutation, that's the main yeah, thing. Yeah. They really can do well. So I think it's kind of changing the GI world uh, more for colorectal, I think, than for pancreatic, but uh, definitely for colorectal. Yeah, I sort of feel like we're about 10 years behind on that. Tony, what's your take on plasma samples in GI cancers? I mean, are we, you know, what's their role for, like, like the lung cancer folks are doing? What's your thoughts on that? So they, they have a role. I, I think, you know, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, you know, the fusions are certainly challenging with plasma, although, you know, as was said, you know, this is getting a little bit better. I think the, the biggest uh, element with, with plasma is one, you know, that you get the results quickly. If it's there, it's likely positive. If it's not there, you, you, you may have missed it. Uh, and so you still want to rely on tissue. One of the things that's actually quite useful with plasma, uh, but it's only its major utility comes in and in, in actually being able to use those sequentially uh, during therapy uh, at specific time points. Uh, but you do need uh, uh, to get your liquid biopsy at the before the initiation of treatment. So you know what the landscape of the tumor looks like. Uh, you know, one of, the, one of the interesting, some of the interesting findings actually, as we learn more and more in, in our different cancers to, to work with target therapy, which is something that we haven't done until more recently, uh, is, uh, you know, where you see these mutations arising, like with the FGFR inhibitors, uh, for example, that uh, targets the fusions uh, in, uh, in, in biliary cancers, you see uh, mutations rising that predict for uh, recurrence. And actually, there are agents that target both the fusions uh, and, and the mutations that have been developed in resistant cases. Uh, we see with HER2 uh, amplified tumors, uh, where we see them at high rate concordance rate between the liquid and the tissue, that MET amplifications end up uh, driving a lot of the resistance, and we have MET agents that are used in clinic, so uh, uh, in actually in clinical uh, research. And, and, and I can go down the list with NTRAC fusions, again, NTRAC mutations. Uh, uh, you know, the question, of course, is how, how much do you use that in actual clinical practice if you don't have an agent that targets that mutation that appears uh, or, or alternative driving uh, <clears throat> pathway, then it's mostly an experimental drug. But prior to treatment, uh, you know, I can tell you multiple times where I haven't had enough tissue for a colon cancer patient, a BRF mutation pops up, it yeah. changes completely my treatment paradigm uh, from a doublet to a triplet, uh, and also, you know, pushes the, the, the patients now to clinical trials. Uh, you know, we're moving these targeted BRF uh, uh, inhibitors oh. into first line. And actually, the study allows for liquid biopsies because we understand that, you know, those patients cannot wait sometimes four to six weeks for us to find the tissue, to test the tissue. Uh, so it facilitates progress in that sense.